Good morning. Thanks for joining. My name is Ian Smith. I'm the Director of Community Engagement here at First United Methodist Church of Waynesville. Welcome to our online service. If you haven't already, make sure you click the like button and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the information coming up. Numbers 11, 1 through 17. Now when the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortune, the Lord heard it and his anger was kindled. Then the fire of the Lord burned against them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. But the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire abated. So that place was called Tibera, because of the fire of the Lord burned against them. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meant to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Now the manna was like coriander seed, and its color was like the color of gum resin. The people went ahead and gathered it, ground it in mills or beat it in mortars, then boiled it in pots and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was like the taste of cakes baked in oil. When the dew flew on the camp in the night, fell on the camp in the night, the manna would fall with it. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their camp, of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that I may lay the burden of all of this people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them, that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land and you promised on an oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all these people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight and do not let me see the misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. And they shall bear the burden of the people along with you so that you will not bear it all by yourself. A few weeks ago, September 5th to be exact, I was a part of a 12-man team that left town in two of our 15 passenger vans um, on an adventure that some people would call an exercise in insanity. As I kissed my wife Chan goodbye, she simply said, you are crazy. The Blue Ridge Relay is a 208 mile race that begins in Grayson Highlands, Virginia and ends in Asheville, North Carolina. For over 33 hours, our team took turns running legs of varying distances and different degrees of difficulty and intensity. And Every opportunity, we would try to sneak in a few hours of sleep. And so we slept on the floor in the Wilderness Trail Ministry Lodge. We slept in the vans. Uh, we slept in a, in a church camp bunkhouse because George just happened to have the key. We slept in sleeping bags on a concrete slab at the side door of a fellowship hall in a Baptist church. <laughs> My third leg on the last day, the race organizers had classified it as mountain goat hard. It was a five mile run that was mountain goat hard. I had never experienced anything like this in my life. The mountain was so steep 
the gravitational pull was so intense that my uh, per mile pace was literally a snail's pace. I mean, it was kind of embarrassing. I watched in awe, actually, as these elite runners sprinted up this hill and ran past me uh, in a blur. But when I reached the summit of the mountain and began to run down the equally steep downhill, the craziest thing happened to me. I found myself on the other side of gravity. I, I don't even know if that makes <laughs> any sense, but I let gravity have me and I ran the fastest mile, slightly terrified, that I had ever run. Gravity. We know about it. We even know its history. In 1655, when the Great Plague hit England, uh, Isaac Newton retreated. He fled into the isolation of his, his family's farm. And he was just sitting around thinking about stuff when he happened to see an apple fall from a tree in the garden. And his curiosity led to the theory that there is an invisible force that makes life on Earth possible. Now, I went to a NASA website and I learned that gravity pulls objects toward each other. Gravity helps a planet like Earth draw objects toward its center. Now, our text um, from the Bible, Numbers chapter 11, it's in a category that scholars call the murmuring stories. I'll say murmuring story. Like, this stuff is crazy. Maybe you felt it as it was being read. And I was just left feeling like, what happened? Like, what happened to the relationships? I mean, the people complain about how awful life is for them right now to the point that they say, we would rather live with Pharaoh as slaves than to live in freedom with God. And God gets really ticked, and that in and of itself makes us restless and uneasy. But God is so angry that God consumes the outlying parts of the camp with fire. And then there's the food problem. <laughs> the story is about a food problem. And you know, we can look down our noses at them, uh, but the food matters. I mean, you think about the conversations that we have about food. I mean, we, we talk about it all the time. Well, what about the food? Well, what about the food in that cafeteria? Or oh, how was the food on the airplane? Or man, that hospital food, or the food in the nursing home. Uh, there are infamous, infamous stories about youth winter retreat food. Just ask some of them that were there. They'll tell you about the plate of soup. I mean, the food is important. They're crying over the food. Like literally, families are standing at the entrances of their tents, weeping. And it makes God mad. And it makes Moses mad. And God and Moses, they get into a fight. Moses is done and asks God for a mercy killing. I can't do this anymore. And so I'm like, how did we get to this place? Because the backstory, it's a love story. I mean, I, I love the way the prophet Jeremiah uh, rem remembers it. That, you know, thus says the Lord, I remember the devotion of your youth, he says to them. Your love as a bride, how you followed me in the wilderness, in a land not sown. But then it turns. What wrong did your ancestors find in me that they went far from me? and went after worthless things and became worthless themselves. 
Well, I'll tell you what went wrong is they had a gravity problem. Now, you may remember at, at the beginning of this journey, it's in the book of Exodus. God hears the families weeping in Egypt. But this time, God has compassion on them. God is moved. I mean, I think you can even imagine. I don't know what it looks like for God to, to weep tears, but God uh, looks for Moses and finds Moses. Now, Moses is away from camp. He's outside of the camp. He's away from his family, and he's, he's herding the sheep. This time, the fire outside of the camp is the burning bush, and God calls Moses out of the fire. Let's go, God says. Let's go to Egypt. Let's save the people. I mean, it's a really sweet moment. <laughs> and it's cool. God's call, though, it's like gravity. God calls us and pulls us to the center. And what that does is it pulls us toward each other. But we try to defy it. I imagine you have your stories. Moses tried to get out of it. Jonah tried to run away from it. And I mean, I did too. We, we find ourselves saying things like, I can't do this. I don't have what it takes. Or maybe, like really more in my case, is I don't want to do this. And so we remember, Moses goes, and they went through this amazing experience like you imagine the people that are these families that are weeping in Egypt they discover God here comes Moses and Aaron and they have this vision and this dream and this promise and what transpires when you when you read the stories in Exodus they're awesome stories sometimes hard to understand but they experience God and salvation comes from that. And as they're escaping Egypt and find themselves in this, in this wilderness, they're free. And there is this amazing promise that life is going to be good, that life is going to be with God, and that, that it's uh, going to be uh, the promised land. Beautiful space to live together. And so they make it into the wilderness, and they set up camp, and now, God's big idea is that God would live at the very center of the camp. When you get to Exodus 25, let's just read, read these few verses. The Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites. Now, we're starting our stewardship series. And so this, so this is also like a, a stewardship text, these verses. So listen to it uh, from that perspective, too. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to take for me an offering. From all whose hearts prompt them to give, you shall receive the offering for me. This is the offering that you shall receive from them. Gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and crimson yarns, and fine linen, goat's hair, tanned ram skins, fine leather, acacia wood, oil for the lamps, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense, onyx stones and gems to be set in the ephod and for the breastpiece. Now listen to verse 8. And have them make me a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. Isn't that cool? Like that's God's dream is to be in our midst. And when you get to the to the book of numbers in chapter 2 there's a detailed explanation that uh, the people are to to set up their tents one on each side of the tabernacle the sanctuary according to their ancestral houses this group is on the east this group is on the west this group is on the north and the south and and god's dwelling place, the tent of meeting, was at the center of the camp. It was really great. 
And so how do we get to this place of anger and frustration, of weeping and gnashing of teeth? Well, I think you could, you could probably say it's the rabble. It's the only place in the word, in the Bible, that that word appears. This group, this, this rabble, they had a strong craving. It says the rabble had a strong craving. And whoever this group was influenced the whole group. And so they, all, they were all craving. And you know, sometimes our cravings can do us in. It's interesting to me that they actually named that place Kibroth Hatave, which literally means graves of craving. So the people want to go back to Egypt and eat cucumbers. Verse 5, we remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now, now our strength is all dried up. But I read that, I was like, you know, it makes sense. I mean, they're in the wilderness, for goodness sakes. So think about that. What they're saying is, we want to go fishing. We want to have some watermelon. Now they say, all we have is this manna to look at. And so the manna is described for us. It was like coriander seed. Its color was like the color of gum resin. The people went around and gathered it, ground it in mills, or beat it in mortars, then boiled it in pots, made cakes of it. And the taste of it, the taste of it, was like the taste of cakes baked with oil. So you can just see them, can't you? Holding these cakes, <laughs> loathing it, like just looking at it. This is all that we have to eat. Now this is the thing. They're craving for Egypt. What it really amounts to is a rejection of God. So how is God feeling? Well, they don't want me. They want something else. I'm providing for them here on this journey, and they are rejecting me. And Moses feels it too. Moses says, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this alone. I'm done. You should have gotten someone else. But the thing about it is, is they get through it. God has a solution. God says, go get 70 people elders, leaders, and bring them. And Moses does. And with this gathering, this community, the answer is community. God pours out God's spirit. When you read it, if you keep reading beyond our text, it feels like, like the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts. God's spirit rests on them and they begin to prophesy. And the journey continues. Now, uh, Bishop uh, Tom Berlin wrote a book, uh, Defying Gravity. In his book, he observes that being God's people can actually be extremely difficult. Uh, he says, The forces we experience in the kingdom of self hold us down and keep us from a better way of life. The gravity of our lives, especially when unexamined, can be oppressive. To experience the kingdom of God we must defy gravity, let go, and truly submit to Christ. So there are forces that will pull us away from all that God wants and hopes and dreams for us. And so this stewardship season in these coming weeks, uh, we're going to explore uh, the gravitational pull that we sometimes experience on our faith journey, things that often keep us from being faithful stewards. Keep us from being what God wants us to be and what God wants us to do. Now, the cool thing about gravity is that gravity pulling objects closer to each other is that the closer objects are to each other, the stronger their gravitational pull is. So, as we encounter forces that pull us away from God, we also discover that being near Jesus pulls us in a new direction 
God's great desire is that we live in the center of God's love. Jesus is the force that leads us there. So my prayer is that we let God's gravity have us. That we let Jesus lead the way. Amen. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is all
cosmic end of God we marvel at the near end of God we love we know and we follow as we go where that way leads let us know that a living Lord will be at our elbow power beside us will be greatest any challenge ahead of us so go in power and in peace <laughs>